Open back in 2003. Have a look at the link. Lincoln Financial Field, where 70,000 are rocking and ready to go in Philadelphia. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up. And he'll get to the 30-yard line before going out of bounds. So first and 10 now from the 30 with the San Francisco 49ers. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. Here we go, here we go. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second and 11 now. Garoppolo, this one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now and this throw will be intercepted. Picked off by Avante Maddox. Avante Maddox. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. But the beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. But so defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Miles Sanders, first carry of the game. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. The ball carrier. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 16 and an Eagle first down. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. And we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got the turnover? We appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Second down, here's Hurts. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the Eagles are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. Seven-yard line. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And the Eagles are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Ask any pass rusher, and they'll tell you, any quarterback who lines up every time and goes straight back in the pocket, that's who they want. But when they have to deal with a Jalen Hurts who may come at them from any angle and can get outside of the pocket and run, that's a nightmare for anybody who has to rush the quarterback. And I love Jalen Hurts' athletic ability. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Eagles 
have taken the early lead. Eagles. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yes, yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Elliott good with a PAT, and that makes the score 7 nothing. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. A play fake from Mostert. Now Garoppolo. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. Complete. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one He's that time. Behind the line of scrimmage. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And incomplete. Almost intercepted. The D lineman almost had it. Couldn't hang on. Three plays and out. It's fourth down. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Eagles seven. 49ers nothing. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well, where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the ball leader, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. So after the run for no game, Here's second and ten. They go play action with Hertz. He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. And it'll bring up third down. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. From the gun, it's Hurts. He's going to drop this down to Sanders. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. Taylor now returning it. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. 
He finds an opening past the 40 and all the way up to the 45-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Brings up so that tight end two. position, it just seems to continue to evolve every line. year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. This is Mostert. Most two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. From the 41. Garoppolo, man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 30. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. So that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Looking to throw again on second down. Garoppolo. Open man is Samuel. Complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. He was looking for Raheem Mostert there. And now it's second down. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating communicating well too so now second and ten after the incompletion on first down Garoppolo again and his throw is going to be incomplete George Kittle the receiver that he was looking for and now it's third down I tell you Brandon this defense is playing with some confidence haven't allowed a point yet flying to the football I'm telling you there's almost 11 to the ball on every snap another nice job there to force an incompletion this offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. And yet again, it's Garoppolo. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. To George Kittle. George Kittle there to make the grab. And the 49ers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, where they want to let their return guy touch it. Seven. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime.
Mitch Wisnowski. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions, just string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. He was looking for Miles Sanders out of the backfield. And that'll bring up second down. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it. Not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back I'm saying not as an announcer just like really a little bit of a diva look isn't it yeah very much so because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think he's wide open now here comes the ball and he doesn't concentrate and he can't get rid of it he's taken down and the 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half Third down, they turn to Sanders. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And that will come the offense as they take over. At their own 31-yard line. On first down, Garoppolo completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. is Garoppolo and that is incomplete 16 seconds now on the clock well so much for getting separation no chance there locked down tight forcing the incompletion on that attempt so second down still 10 yards to go ball on the 43 Garoppolo going to give to Mostert. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. It's a gain of a yard, and it's third down. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 our score. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach fields it in the middle of the end zone. And the half will begin with a touchback. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Ball at the 24 at a second and 11. Shotgun snap and then the give to Sanders. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. He 
was tackled. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And that will be incomplete. So stop here defensively to start this third quarter. Just what's needed in a tie ball game. Yeah, good chance to build back some momentum on the defensive side of the ball. In fact, what they've done is give their offense a nice push in the back as they get ready to take the field. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Garoppolo on first down. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. There's Mostert. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Two yards, and it's third down. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. Now Garoppolo is in trouble, and down he goes. Brandon Graham drops him for a loss of 14 yards, and it also brings up fourth down. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down, you bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. But first down, Hurts. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. That's caught by Jackson. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a gain of six. Makes it third and two. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Caught right side is Jeffrey. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine at the Niners' 15-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports.
They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Throwing his hurts. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. It's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air because if that happens, then it's fair. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. Miles Sanders, the second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Eagles have taken the lead. Uh, he's giving him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs down the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And this carries into the end zone. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And right away, he'll look to throw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there, and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. To George Kittle. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. To throw, it's Garoppolo. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 35. 13 yards. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And finally taken down at the 15. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Mostert. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted.
Back to throw. Garoppolo looking for Ayuk, and he's got him. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. Garoppolo to Ayuk. First down, 49ers. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. They'll run with Mostert. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. The extra point, a vital one, and he gets it to go. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taken in at the three. And he returns this to the 22. Scott on the return. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And inches at the 32-yard line. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Hurts. Got a man. He finds Sanders. And Sanders has it poked free. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. After the fumble recovery, it's Garoppolo. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 23 yards on the play. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now... First in this down, situation, it should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Here Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Now Moster. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. Well, any thoughts about overtime have ended at this juncture. That touchdown puts them up six. I would imagine they'll kick the extra point now and rely on their defense. Yeah, rely on their defense. So a little bit of time left on the clock here in the fourth, but they got to feel good now. 
It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Makes the score at the Niners 21, Eagles 14. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. From the six. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. 30-yard line. He's back to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Try and run it. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Seven yard line. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. That is caught at the 7. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. They make a good bit of that yardage back as they're set up in much better shape now for second and goal. His pass caught at the four. And he's across for the touchdown, and it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. Obviously, the excitement level here is almost a fever pitch. Down one is tempted to go for two. I say you go ahead and kick the extra point. You got the home crowd carried into overtime. I'm with you. I do see some fans, though, holding up two fingers. Easy now. Yeah, but they're not the ones who have to actually make that call, are they? So now this will be, in all likelihood, to force overtime. And he has got it. So barring something crazy on the kickoff, we're looking at an extra period to decide this one. the kicks away this taken in about four yards deep and with time a factor here late he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25 on first and 10 it's Mostert and he'll be upended at the 28 yard line just a three yard gain there Mostert the ball carrier 
That's the end of regulation. Four corners, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get a field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run with Sanders. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. And oh, Johnson dinged up a bit. Still down. Hopefully nothing serious. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now a first throw here in overtime. Steps away. He's going to take off with it. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier in this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have something about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. They'll throw on first down with Hurts toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Rolling to his left. And he's going to keep it here. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First and ten, it's Hurts. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Second down, here's Hurts. Jackson's got it over the middle. Hurts. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Here's Hurts to throw. And Jeffrey's got it. 
And he's going to have an Eagles first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. This is a big spot for a rookie QB in overtime. It's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is. And we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. Yeah, starting to put together a nice drive. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll be a second down. Here's Sanders shedding the tackle down to the 25. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. A gain of two brings up third and seven. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. From the gun, it's Hurts. He may try and run for this. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 12-yard line. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. And they'll try a jet sweep. It's Rager. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Oh, let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. It's second and seven from the 9. Hurt sets up to throw it. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And it's third down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Roll it. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Here as we say so long from Philadelphia.